All right, problem three, we have the graph of F given here, and it consists of these three line segments, straight line segments, and a quarter circle here. And we have G defined by this integral. So we got to find the average rate of change of G from X equals negative five to X equals five. Okay, so just, you know, remember just the basic definition and the basic concept between, um, you know, rate of change and, you know, how it relates to slope, you know? So when we're talking about the average rate of change on an interval, this is simply gonna be equal to the, the, the value of G at one end point. So we can say just G of five minus the value of G at the other end point over that, you know, interval. So over five to negative five. So five minus negative five would be the denominator. So it's basically like your slope formula, f of, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Now, the key is to understand what g of five and g of negative five would be. So g of five would be equal to the integral for one to five of f of t dt. And g of negative five would be the integral from one to negative five of f of t dt all over 10. Now, the integral from one to five of f of t dt would simply be basically the, the area from here to let's see, two, three, four, five to here. So this shaded region, you can think of it as the area of this triangle plus the area of this rectangle. So the area of this triangle is just two times one half of four. So two times, two times two essentially. So four minus the area of this, um, or, well, let's actually let's focus on that first. So four plus the area of this rectangle. So two times four, so four plus eight. This minus the integral from one to negative five. And one negative five is going backwards. So from here to negative one, two, three, four, five, here to here, so negative. From here to negative five would be the area of this triangle plus the area of this quarter circle plus the area of this triangle. Now, um, there's two things about this. So first, this would be, you know, these values will be negative because they're below the x-axis. The technical definition, um, that's why technically we, they don't define the integral as the area um, because technically area is always supposed to be a positive quantity, but I just call it area and I'll always call it area usually in these videos. Um, it's just, it's just kind of how you think. Um, but in other words, when the area is below the, ne when the, area is below the um, x-axis, it's gonna be negative. So the area of this triangle would be negative one, because half of two times half of one, negative one. The area of this quarter circle, remember the area of a circle is pi r squared, so the area of a fourth circle is one fourth pi r squared. The radius here is two, so this would be one fourth of pi times two squared, or one fourth of four, or one, or one fourth times pi times four, or which would just be pi, but this would be negative pi. And the area of this triangle, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So half of four times three, 12, half of, half of um, I guess negative 12, this would be negative six. So what you're doing is subtracting this total area combined, but since the integral goes in reverse, it goes from one to negative five, this, whatever these three quantities add up to, you multiply by a negative one again, or multiply by negative whatever, or multiply by the opposite value. So technically, if these three values combine, negative six, 
plus negative pi plus negative one. So negative one minus six minus pi. I hate squeezing right in there, but you know, that make it fit all over 10. So on top we have, simplifying this 12, minus a minus, so it's really 12 plus. Negative seven minus pi. All over 10, and that comes down to five minus pi over 10. And since this is a non-calculator problem, um, you really don't have to worry about simplifying, simplifying, simplifying it into a decimal. So this answer will be fine. Okay, moving on to B. I already did this, well, I did this. <laughs> oh yeah, I did this earlier. I forgot to erase it, but actually let me, well, this is actually a pretty simple one. So let me just explain it. We want to find the instantaneous rate of change of G with respect to X at, at X equals three. So the instantaneous rate of change is by definition, the derivative. So we want to find the derivative of G at the point X, the derivative of G, G prime of three. If we're going to take the derivative of G, that means we're taking the derivative of this integral. When you differentiate an integration or when you take the derivative of the integral, it basically undoes the integration process. So that this symbol just goes away. So you're really just finding f of three. So you look at the graph of f, one, two, three, and f of three is this point right here, three, four. So f of three is four. And that's your answer for that. That's all there is to that part. How to stay hydrated. Part C, on what open intervals, if any, is the graph of G concave up? Justify your answer. Okay, remember concavity? You wanna study the second derivative. So we wanna study the second derivative of G. And if we're saying concave up, that's when the second derivative is positive. So we wanna find when the second derivative is positive. Now the second derivative or G double prime of X, Going back, since g of x is equal to this integral, and we know this, remember this tells us that g prime of x is equal to f of x. That means that g double prime of x is equal to f prime of x. So we can set this equal to f prime of x. And so we essentially wanna find when is f prime of x more than zero. And this is really just analysis. And think about what this means. When the derivative is more than zero, that means the derivative is positive. On a graph, you're looking at when, where the slope is positive. So we look at this graph and find where the slope is positive, not where the value is positive. So the slope is positive on this interval. So from negative, I think that looks like negative five, negative five to negative two, it's positive. It's negative here, and it becomes positive all along here, so it's zero to three. So then our answer would be, on the interval, negative five to negative two, and zero to three. And, and it's saying justify your answers, so just keep your explanation simple. That's my advice, keep it simple, don't write too much. Um, simply say something like, I, I would simply say because the slope of F is positive on these intervals. Or you can just say because F prime of X is positive on these intervals. Don't try to write and add to an explanation because you feel that you have to sound or use high level like like calculus terms. Just keep it simple. The graders want to, you know, graders they're graders. They're, they're people. Graders they're 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 people. People like um, simple explanations. Um, so always, you know, 
try to try to focus on keeping your answers and explanations straight to the point. Part D, final values in the interval from negative five to five at which G has a critical point and then classify each critical point as the location of a local minimum, maximum, or neither. Okay, so remember critical points are where um, the value of the derivative of a function are either gonna be zero or undefined. So critical points would be where G prime of X is equal to zero or where G prime of X is undefined. Now, since remember G prime of X is equal to F of X, you wanna essentially find where is F of X equal to zero or where is f of x undefined? So let's just look at the graph of f and find where it's zero or and undefined. So the graph of f, it's gonna be zero here, negative two, zero at one. Those are our two zeros and it's not undefined anywhere. Um, remember, if, if we're talking about the slope of this graph, it would be undefined here. I mean, if we were talking about the derivative of the graph, it would be here, even here as well. But um, we're just simply talking about the value. The value is undefined nowhere. So our critical points are just going to be negative 2 and 1. Now let's analyze what's going on at these points. It would, if it would be a local max, local min. For that, I would make an, a, a chart breaking the intervals of the function up at these points. So we're gonna break it up at negative two and at one. And our endpoints, you know, negative five and five, because that's where the graph, you know, starts and ends. And we look at what the f of x is. And we only really care about the sign of f of, f of x. Let's look at the sign of f of x on these intervals. So from negative, so from negative five to negative two, the sign is negative. It stays negative, and it stays negative all the way and up to one. After one, it becomes positive and stays positive after all throughout the rest. So what we would write here is it's negative, negative, and positive. So there's nothing, there's neither a local min or local max at negative two, but at one, there's gonna be a local minimum. Because remember, local minimum would occur when a graph goes from decreasing to increasing, this would be like a minimum. And that's what occurs here. So let's write that. So neither a local min, or max at x equals negative two, local min at x equals one because x because um f of x changes from negative to positive at here at this value. And there you go. That's really all there is to this problem.